Yo, yo, I'm Mixed Miles and Mile Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, it'll also be my little tiny Riley Boy. Hello. He's off on his six week summer holiday, uh, just started, so he's on about his um, first or second day off on away from school. So, a nice little break, relax time, chill out, and just mooch around and enjoy yourself, yeah? Sound good? What did Daddy buy you yesterday in B&M? What? What did I buy you yesterday in B&M, do you remember? A crinkle bus. A crinkle bus, yeah. So Riley likes little tiny Pringles. He's quite quite partial to a Pringle. Once you pop, he just can't stop. They had a big cardboard box there, about 15, 20 little miniature ones, didn't he? A bus one, didn't it? Remember? Who did you hear car wash? Who, who did a car wash? No. Uh, a cardboard box. A cardboard box? Yeah, who did it? I, I, I got it for you, didn't I? Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome. So in today's video, what we're going to do is... um. I want to show you some lawnmowers I picked up. Now, I drove around about 400 miles there and back uh, with my dad the other day. Went just south of Birmingham to go and do a little deal. Do you remember I had an Atco Balmoral 17 uh, lawnmower in the other week, which uh, had all the cylinder sharpened up and I serviced it? Well, that, um, that's gone. And the gentleman who, uh, who I did a deal with, um, he gave me two machines and I gave him the 17 um, Atco Balmoral SK with a little bit of money on top and I got a little deal coming back, some mowers coming back, so that's good. And on top of that, I also bought another Atco Balmoral 20S with a Decumpsy engine on top uh, for very, very cheap money in my local area, so that's good. But before we get on, we got some packages. now. I don't know what it is of late, but I've been receiving lots and lots of emails and messages saying, Mick, got a problem, how to get over this, blah, blah, blah. And um, on my email, there's always a link to my Amazon wish list if I've helped anyone out and, and I've saved them a bit of time and money if they want to buy me a little gift. They have, so that's cool. So some of these bits I have actually bought myself, which is quite cool. So I've bought myself um, some pull cord. I was right out of pull cord. I've got some, um, I use this, um, this is a company called um, Rockwood. Rockwood starter pull cord, 100 meters and 50 meters of 3.5 and 3 millimeters. So they got to go in the drawer just down here, right, the boy. That's where they live down there. Now that's good. Get rid of those. Box. Yeah, we'll do that in a minute, mate. So that's that one done. What box? No, that that, that was what the uh, Cobra Fortress came in. Um, someone bought me off my Amazon, which is a little carburetor. Now these are quite quite um, quite handy. These are the two-stroke um, strimmer, weed whacker, brush cutter, blower, carburetors. These are the 11 mil throats on them. And generally, any machine that is like 48, 50 sort of cc or anything lower than that, generally they're an 11 mil throat. And um, as long as they look roughly the same, then they'll, they will work. And uh, um, someone came in, a friend of mine came in with a um, Hyundai, uh, what did he have? It was either a blower, it wasn't a blower, I promise. No, it was a mount field, a little mount field multi tool, which just wasn't working right. I put a new pot and piston on it last year, that, that's fine. But for some reason, a carburetor was playing up, so I just got one of these um, and uh, whacked it on there, and away it went, went away with no problem. So it runs up to the A1. So, um, so someone bought me that. There's no list, no letter with that one, but someone did buy me a, a two stroke 11 mil um, carburetor there for, for strimmers. No, no, I mean, leave it closed until I need it. So that's good. I've got one here. They're already open, buddy. I need to make sure we get the right, the right people. So you, you pull out what's in there. Yeah, there's a letter, right? Yeah, that's what it is in there. You hold that. I'll, I'll read the letter. Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Thanks um, for all your help, Mick. I'll keep in touch. Perhaps I'll even bring the mower to you for repair. Enjoy your gifts from Keith Merk uh, Meekin. So Who's Keith, that? Keith was a gentleman that um, I, hey buddy, I um, he he had he had a, I don't want to say it really because it's a bit naughty, but he, he he took his lawnmower into a shop, okay, into a main dealer and to have it repaired. Now it was a cylinder mower, and they said initially the cylinder mower carburetor fault it had, you couldn't get the parts for it. But I found the part for it, uh, which LNS Engineering had, I believe. You mind your fingers there, buddy? Um, so he fitted that, but when he fitted the, the broken part, which was what it went in for originally, the lawnmower shop said that uh, they couldn't get it to run right. So he did a carburetor clean and got it all to run as it should do. But when he tried to fire the cylinder up, the cylinder wouldn't move. So I said to remove the, the side inspection compartment, you know, where, 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 the, uh, where the, all the bits and bobs are. He took the side off of the, um, I think it's a Quocast cylinder mower, and it was missing half of the stuff in there. All the cogs were missing, the main pulley was missing, and the belts were missing. And so he emailed me up, because he's in, in a bit of frustration with, with, with his company. I don't know who they were, I'm not going to name them either. Um, I supplied him with some second-hand parts and some bits and bobs and new belts and what have you. Anyway, he put it all back together, he started the lawnmower up and it had a catastrophic 
um, failure. Something happened with a clutch or something. It just fully mutilated itself. And it wasn't like that before it went in. Um, so I don't know what's happened. I don't know who's responsible for for the damage, but there were certainly about four or five bits missing. So I have helped Keith along his way and he is looking to try and get it up and run if he can. And he may even be bringing it, I think he's about two hours from me. He may be bringing it down to me for me to have a look at. So Keith, if I watch you, mate, if I can help you, mate, I will do. But thank you very much for my Knipex um, side cutters. They're lovely. I've got, I've got quite a nice little set of um, of Nipex stuff. That's cool. So that's good. No, he says, enjoy your gifts. And I don't know if there's any more from Keith because I want two bits here with no names on. So that's good. We also had, yeah, yeah. there you go. Let's pull that out, I'll, I'll pull this one out. Huh? Uh, there are some letters in there, I think, mate, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I think there's a letter in here. There's a couple of bits here. Whoop, whoop, yeah, that's did. a receipt. Yeah, we did. That's a receipt. Is there a letter here or not? Uh, no letter here, no, that's just a receipt, mate. So someone has bought me, uh, these look quite cool. I found these on, um, what's that there? Oh, same one. I found these on uh, on Amazon, and I thought, you know what, they could be quite handy. It comes with a little tiny shop rag, but this is more important than what, what I wanted, and someone's bought it for me. These are a set of hose um, hose removal pliers, if you like. And what you do is, you put them in, and then you open the pliers up, and it pushes your fuel hoses away from your car. They're pretty cool, so we give them a go. I don't know who sent those, but if it was you, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And someone also sent me, I don't want to get too, too lost here, Riley boy. Someone also sent me a set of Imperial short sockets as well. These are drapers um, to go in my socket drawers as well. I didn't have a lot of Imperial stuff, Imperial stuff sort of all disappeared. So all your half inches, three eighths, what have you, they're in there now, and they're, they're the smaller ones too. So thank you very much. If that was you, What's that? that's a little tiny shop rack. I bought, uh, someone bought me this as well, actually. Someone bought me this. It might be a letter in there, actually. I think it's a letter in this one. I'll just tuck it in here. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So someone bought me this. I might do a quick little review on this later on. Here we do. it. There you go. This is from, hope you, hope you get to see the light at the end of a tunnel. Enjoy from Paul, um, Mad About Mowers. Oh, yeah. He owns a, a little company called Mad About Mowers. And Can sometimes he asks me a few, a few tips, tricks and favours. Can we pull you? No. And this one here, this is quite a cool little light. You put it on. So when you're working away with your light, you turn your light on, right? Boom. Right, that's no problem. And you've got different brightnesses there. You, you can have it dimmer. Uh, or, or on the side, a little light on the side here as well, which is quite cool. But when you have it on, right, let's just say you're working away and you want to turn it off. Rather than looking for the button, if you just push the second button here, the well, light goes off. As you're working away, you just go bump, it comes on, bump, it goes off without touching it. So it's got, it's got a sensor on there as well, which is, which is really cool. So I'll try and leave a link in the description for those. I might do a little review on that myself. So yeah, you want to try it, dude? Put it on your head. There you go. Right, now just get your hand and let's turn it... Uh, there you go, that's on. Let me just move it over the side here, look. Hang on. Right, there you go, right now, just, just a flash. All right, I'll put on sensor. There you go, right now, do it. Do it that way. On, on, oh. off, <laughs> on. Wax on, wax off. There you go, how cool is that? So there you go, nice little head torch there. And it's quite handy for when you actually work, we're working away. There's nothing, nothing poking out, which is quite cool. And you can work away to your heart's content. So yeah, a nice little light that on. So that's good. But it, the one I, I got originally, it broke, uh, it wouldn't even work, so I sent it back and they replaced it, so that's cool. So thank you very much to uh, Mad About Mowers um, for sorting me out with a little head torch, much appreciated. That's good. Um, the next thing we had, they're just some service bits from China from the old Atco uh, Bound Morals. Uh, they're oh. my spark plugs for that, which I'm doing a uh, service on today. So I've got this spark plug here, and this is from Jenny and Luciano. Now they turned up the other week. Uh, Tom, uh, my mate Tom at um, Vintage Small Engine Repair, his mum and dad turned up because they had a broken lawnmower and wanted me to fix it for them, which, which I did. And I said, I'm not taking no payment for it. I don't, I don't do that sort of thing. And they sent me a, B, a BCPR 5ES spark plug there. And on top of that, they also sent me, which I was really shocked about. Anyway. They sent me a nice looking, anyone notice the colour? Nice looking Milwaukee set of um, screwdrivers, flat heads and Phillips. They sent me a really nice set of my Amazon wish list of uh, Milwaukee screwdrivers there as well. So thank you very much Luciano and Jenny for sending me some lovely Milwaukee screwdrivers. I should probably be painting them yellow so they look like a Dewalt set. That'd be good. Yeah, buddy. Is it China or America? Uh, China, they're from. Um, and then what else we've got here? We've got another parcel here. This is all Amazon stuff, this is amazing. 
Someone also sent me, I don't know who these were, there's no name of these ones. Someone sent me some nice little tweezers here uh, for just you know, for, for picking out bits that are just, just below the arm. We can't quite get to them. A little short set there and a big set there. They may not, may not look like much, but when you want to pick a little nut up or something, you just can't quite get to it. These are quite handy, so that, that, there's a good little thing there. If that was you who bought me those, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Yeah. That's good. And I think we're there. I think that's everything that um, has been either bought for me yet or, um, no, that's, uh, what's in that box? No, that, no, they're, they're um, discs for cutting. On top of that, um, just registered myself. Registered myself to go to Soltex. Uh, this year, which I believe, uh, when is that event? Uh, da, 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 Wednesday the 1st and 2nd of November at the NEC, uh, which is a, a lawnmower convention, surf, uh, surf and turf um, exhibition out, outdoors of all your, all your outdoor equipment. I should be going on there probably on the last day, I normally do. Me, Conker, Pete, and a couple of others nip over there and just have a, have a mooch uh, about. Abby, Sit, and you, maybe. Maybe if you're a good boy, I might take you. Where are we going? Uh, Birmingham. And um, we stay over in the travel lodge for the night beforehand, have a few beers, have something to eat, and then we head off over to Saltex. So if you want to meet me over at Saltex um, this year in November, then book yourself up for a ticket. They're absolutely free. Just got to register it and you print your own ticket off and you can and go. Mummy. So uh, Mummy was on about us all going, but I'm not sure what Mummy's going to do wait. yet. We, we shall see. So that's good. So yeah, if you want to see us at, at Saltex, then um, register your ticket online, and it's all it's all free to get in. It don't cost nothing, and then um, you just got to buy your hotel if you want to, if you want to stay overnight or whatever. If you want to, if you want to go up on the night and I'm go back on Sunday, it costs you nothing. It's, it's a free day out, so that's cool. So that's that. So um, all we've got to do now is go outside, have a little look at these cylinder lawnmowers that I picked up. I'll try and get one service if I can. So I might try and start on the older Atco Balmol 20S, which the bloke said it's been sat for a year and it doesn't start. That's as much as I know about it. I haven't even tried to start it. I was too busy driving 400 miles up towards Birmingham to get these other two SKs, which I'll show you around now. So Pip's in her bed. She's laid down. Riley boy's here. We're all chilled out. Are you Pip. tired? Hmm. Pip's all dick. Pip stinks. Is she blown yeah. off, is she? Like, what are you wagging your tail for? She has. She's blown off. So if this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mows and Merman, hit the subscribe button, not whack the old bell. <laughs> that way you'll be told next time about another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's go outside, check out these Atco Bound Morals and some of the SKs. See what we've got. See what we're looking at. Okay, so let's have a little look, see what we've got then. Where you go, Riley? Where you go? Let's have a little mooch out here. So, here they are. This is what we picked up just uh, about two days ago. I haven't done a lot down the garden because uh, I had a few bits on my old plate and uh, not managed to get a lot done. But we managed to get down the garden today. So Mrs. P's at work and I've got Riley Boy at home. So that's, that's pretty Nan's cool. House. Yeah, Nan's at Auntie Shell's house. That's right, mate, yeah. So here we are then. So I picked up, managed to pick myself up a rather nice looking uh, Atco Balmoral um, 20S um, from, this has come from, from the Witterings. Now it is in quite rough shape to be fair. Um, it looks like it's done a little bit of work or it's just been, it's been neglected. But we all know that mixed mowers can uh, make these shine right up. Um, it does come with, uh, in a grass box, a brand spanking new by the looks of it. Oh no, second hand. Um, exhaust exhaust shroud cover so this one's going to have to be all all stripped down sprayed up made to look nice to, to get any any sort of decency out of it because um it's, it's it just looks a bit rough so i have a quick little walk around this one first see what you think of this one yeah and then um stay there Riley. and then um we'll see what the other two look like because the other two are just slightly i would say slightly uh a little bit more different so this is the first one uh, Atco 20, it's got a little bit of scuffing on, 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 on the shield mode, but I do have another uh, Atco 20S in the, in the mower store, which I could possibly take the shroud off of this to change it. There's a little bit of bubbling going on there, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. We, we, we should see a bit sticky as well. So we'll see what, what goes on, but the cylinder doesn't look too bad. Plenty of life in the cylinder, but the cylinder needs to be taken out and uh, sprayed up. Make it look nice. See, height control things fall off, which I normally do on these uh, at Co Alex, so it normally happens. Um, don't know what year it is. Can't even see a year because it's been sun bleached. That happens quite a lot, but I may be able to get the date off of that at a later time, no problem. But he said it doesn't start, so that's what we're going to start with first. He said it'd been stored 
uh, store for about a year and then um, it just it just refusing to start doesn't do anything is what he said to me his, his exact words now I'm not sure whether he actually just buys stuff to sell on or what he does but come out of a garage and um, he had quite a bit in a garage which is not uncommon right but had quite a, quite a lot of just different stuff so I don't know if he buys, buys to sell, picks up stuff, house clearance, garden clearance, I don't know what he does, but it just seems a bit weird. He lived in a flat, I believe, unless he rents a garage out. Lives in a flat, so why would he have an acro bound mole there? Um, but he says, not been started for about a year and doing nothing. There's no fuel in this tank at all. There's no fuel whatsoever. So let's put a bit of fuel in. Just enough, just a wet little whistle. I don't know if it's got any fuel leaks or, or anything. Yeah, she's thirsty, it's right, Riley. What's that cap doing? What? That cap will be split in there, put another cap for that at some point. Right, let's see what it does then. So, uh, any fuel tap? Nope. Turn it on to choke, on the revs. Let me just check that oil first as well before I do anything. I don't like pull machines over, I don't know nothing about that. Checking the oil first. Just pour it all, all out. Oh, we've got loads of oil, yeah, plenty of oil. And all is greyish in colour, not grey like silver, but just it could do with an oil change, but it's not excessive. Right, so on the choke, bit of full throttle, let's see what we get. There you go. Oh. Ah, no cylinder. Drive works. Oh, drive works a lot. It really, really wants a choke. So that one needs to come in for a carburetor clean. There's no, there's no cylinder on it. That's not working, and it is, it is pulling. So I need to investigate why the cylinder isn't spinning on that. It may just be locked up, maybe. So that, yeah, it feels a bit locked up. So don't know what's happened with that, but but we get to the bottom of it, right? So a nice little 20 inch there. I didn't pay a lot of money for that, as you can see by the condition. Now, the next one, I bought these two over in Birmingham, or just shy of Birmingham, off of a gentleman who took my 17 inch off of me. I paid him a little bit of money uh, on top as a deal. And that's what I got back. I got a 20 inch Atco Bound Moral SK and a 14 inch um, Atco Bound Moral SK exactly the same as the Alec Kensington's and what have you, exactly the same. They look to be, the 14 in particular, it's been in fantastic condition, and the 20 is in is in pretty good. Also the 20 looks like it's got a bit of a fuel leak's gone on over time, um, but uh, nothing too serious. The spark plugs look pretty good, um, but these will all want to have a service as well. And they did come with, the 14 came with a Versa cut cylinder on top, which is fantastic and the 20 came with a, a scarifying cylinder. Now I do know that in my shed of many things, I've probably got about 10 of these. Uh, so I have got a scarifier for a, a 14. I don't have a Versa cut for a 20, that'd be lovely, uh, but I don't have one. Because uh, the Versa cuts, they're, they're, they're not cheap and they're, they are quite sought after. So super happy with that. I put this um, these two just on a post, I think it's on Facebook just to show uh, the guys on there, what I picked up, and there's a lot of interest about these machines when I go to sell them on. So, if you're interested, message me up or email me up because um, uh, they will be up for sale quite soon. And by the time this video comes up, they may have already gone, but they'll definitely be listed. So, let's have a quick look around me. Just take the grass boxes off. Now, I know what you said the 20 had a bit of an issue with regards to the cylinder, one of the bolts is sheared off. So, when I go to sell it, I have to tell the person whoever buys one buys it, but it has a little issue with a cylinder, you just have to take the bolt all the way out, which, which would involve taking the side cover off, so not the end of the world. <coughs> so, as you can see, the 20 inch cylinder has been recently refurbished, um, just wants a jet wash, I'd say, just to bring it up to, to where it needs to be, and it just looks dull, okay, just looks dull in, dull in character, the paint could do just a little bit of a shine up, and I'll show you how I do it later on. Comes with a scarifier, as I say, and comes also with, with a grass box. And then the 14 uh, comes with a Versa cut and a now, and now a Scarifier, because I have a Scarifier for it. But that cylinder, I don't think it's cut anything at all. It's been refurbished. So that looks lovely. The, the whole machine 
a few paint mark scrapes here and there which you expect from just using but the 20 has got a little tiny fuel leak just there which I, can, which I can sort that out that's no problem at all a bit of paint touch up but they're both to be looking in fantastic condition let me just pop you back on the old stand and we'll try and fire these two up now they all they all run uh to to a certain degree i think one of them one of them does want to hunt and surge a little tiny bit out of the way the boy good lad let's have a quick look here come on there buddy so the uh 14 first let's just fire that up and i've got all the service kits for you so these, these will be sold fully serviced all change filters a lot okay first pull which is what what you should expect from a kawasaki onto half choke I sort of turn that fuel on me. Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Right, off choke. And there's a little tiny hunt and surge there. A little tiny hunt and surge. So it will want carburetor work. But it's not a lot because you can go from idle to full throttle without it cutting out. So it's not a lot. Both the cylinder work. Beautiful sound. And the drive works also. Lovely. So it's a very, very small hunt, but I can do that carburetor clean, no problem at all. So if you want to see videos on how to service these, these will be coming up very, very soon. So nice little Kawasaki, 14 SK, in rather nice condition. Well, actually in very good condition, actually. I'm very, I'm very pleased with it indeed, actually. So that's the 14. Are you hungry, Riley, are you? Are you waiting for your lunch? Yeah. I thought it is lunchtime, isn't it? I want to get this video done, mate. We're going to get some lunch, shall we? Is your camera okay, Reed? Say again, mate. Is your camera okay? Is my camera okay? Camera's fine, mate. Then we've got a 20 inch. Let's turn that on. Is fuel turned on? Yeah, fuel turned on. Now, this might be out of fuel because there's a very, very slight fuel leak on it. Now, there's a bit of fuel in there. There's a very slight fuel leak on this machine, um, which is not a problem. Let's start this one up. Why is buddy? First pull once again, onto half choke. Off choke, full revs. So there you go. <clears throat> Two rather nice looking Alec Kensers. Let me show you a little trick what I do. It just helps preserve the paintwork. And it really isn't no science at all. Let me just grab two items, okay? Now, you may laugh and joke, right? But once you finish with your machine, tidy it all off, hose it all off, dry it all off, look after it, right? Get yourself some WD-40. Straightforward WD-40, okay? It has got other names. But just generally spray it. No, I'm not worried about my grass. You guys will be. Just liberally spray it onto the machine, all right? And then rub that over. Now, not wiping it off, just rubbing it in, okay? Rub it into the machine loosely. Now, you saw how dull looking this machine looked a minute ago, okay? Now, if you just use an oily rag, it does exactly the same thing. A little tiny oily rag. Get right in the nooks and crannies. A little bit on, on, on the tank as well. Wipe it over. And if you just did that at the end of your mowing day, when you finish mowing, okay, and you can do the same to the grass boxes too. If you did that for a couple of seconds, after you finish mowing, then your cylinder mower would look like that. Okay, a nice shine to it. Now, if I grab the, the rag and WD-40 go over to the the Alec Kensington, oh, sorry, not the Alec Kensington, the Aqua Bound Moral. Look how dull that looks there. See, quick little spray, WD-40, all over. Just let that sit for a minute. Okay, quick little wipe off on top of the tank. It catches all the dust. Takes all the dust off, and then just with one little tiny wipe over, just brings that machine up 
just like new. And that's where that little tiny petrol spill is going to disappear over time. If you keep on, turn that fuel off, it has a little bit of fuel leak on it. If you keep on treating it with WD-40, it gets rid of the dust. And look, see that mark? It's gone already, okay? So you can use a clear lacquer, but I would just use WD-40 to begin with. And you can see what it looked like beforehand, what it looks like now. It makes night and day difference, right? Night and day difference. Isn't that nice? That looks better already. So you can do that to your machines just to make them look nice. What do you think, Riley? Look nice? Yep. Fantastic, there you go. So there you go, we've got um, three ATCOs to get on with. So we're back off the, um, back off the, um, off the Cobra now, and now back onto the uh, ATCOs. I've got a few more videos to come out on the, uh, on the Cobra, yeah. So lots of belt changes and things, bits and pieces. So keep an eye out for those. But you can do the same on your grass boxes too. Just to stop that sun from getting to, your, to the paintwork. A little bit of WD-40. Just makes them pop. And especially if you're gonna sell them on, a quick shot of WD-40, then take your photograph. And when someone comes and looks at that, they think, cool, look at that. Don't that look a thing of beauty? compared to, you know, a, a dusty old mower. Because in my opinion, 99% of the sale is the photograph in which you take. It's as simple as that. Just a little bit of time and effort in the right places just makes them jump up. Now, I do use a lot of clear lacquer as well. The only problem with clear lacquer is if they do decide to leave it outside and not look after it, that clear lacquer will peel off eventually and uh, start to flake. And uh, no one will thank you if you've got a flaky at Cobal Moral. So that's now what it look like with both the grass boxes now done up. Looking rather spanky, spanky and nicey compared to what it looked like a minute ago. And I'd buy that. They're lovely, it's a beautiful thing. I'm saying that on there, look. Yeah. They look much better. I get lots of questions asked, how do you get your mouse to look so nice, Mick? WD-40. WD-40, just, just, just keep oiling them up, or, or, you know, a bit of spare engine oil. Just rub it into the metal work. Keeps that metal work looking a bit supple, a bit nice, so. There you go. So that's what's coming up. I should start on the Atco Balmol 20S first, I think. I think we'll start on with that one. Uh, we'll have that in the shed tomorrow. And, We'll have a carburetor off, because it needs carburetor work, definitely, 100%. Uh, the cylinder isn't spinning, so we've got to figure that out as to why that's not doing what it should be doing. Uh, but that'd be, that'd be quite a cheaper shot of Atco bow model, um, but still should command quite a good price, because it is a 20 inch. Once the cylinder's been all, all been done, if it, needs, if it needs grinding, I'll get it ground, but I don't think it does. There's plenty of meat on the bone there, so. Uh, they don't always need to be ground, not all the time. It does need a new air filter, it definitely needs a new plug, same as the other two here, the S-Case. Um, but overall, super happy. Definitely worth traveling 400 miles, 200 there, 200 back with my dad. I did try and get some footage, but I forgot my microphone, so no, the audio wasn't much good, so I, I left it be. But there you go, quick little video on what I've picked up, what's coming on my channel. So if you're at Cobal Mall, Alec Kensington crazy, keep an eye out, because I'll have more videos coming out on how to service them, how to repair them, how to get them running if they're not running and all tips and tricks on how to keep your machine up in fantastic condition. Okay, quick little video there on uh, how to uh, look after your ACCO-bound moulds. I say there's more, I've got loads and loads of ACCO cylinder mower videos up on my um, channel. In fact, I think we're nearly cresting a thousand videos uh, in four years, which I've done uh, with Riley Ball on how to fix, repair, tips, trips and hacks on how to keep your garden machine running. So hopefully there's something for everyone. If there is, give us a big thumbs up. It helps towards the growth of our channel. And uh, the bigger our channel gets, the better it does, and the better it does for you guys and girls at home. So there you go. Give us a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and whack the old bell. Yeah. You quite finished? <laughs> that way you'll be told next time we'll have another video. We look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mods very, very soon. But to guys and girls, much more importantly, take it easy. Yeah,